powder cake to me. Europe seemed to be doing well in 1914. It had done well for a long time. The last 99 years since Napoleon's defeat had hardly been peaceful, but it wasn't an age ruled by total war. Now, this is more the age of industrialization and invention, railroads, factories, production lines, telephones and telegraphs and even radios, pharmaceuticals, synthetics, film, and lots of people. The continent's population was rising 10% every decade. In Western Europe especially, the government was bringing mass education to the growing middle class. And what's more, they were reading. The rise of literacy led to a massive influx of newspapers. In Britain, the Daily Mail had a circulation of one million by the 1910s. And if they wanted a novel, Europeans had Tolstoy in Russia, Thomas Mann in Germany, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in England. Or they could enjoy the ballet roofs, or the films of the English actor Charlie Chaplin, whose trademark character, The Tramp, premiered in 1914. Ah, oh, yes indeed, it's fun time, fun time, fun time. By this year, Europe's citizens lived better, ate better, were better educated, and probably better entertained than any of their previous generations. 
Oh, and the royal families were better connected than ever before or since. George V of England and Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany were first cousins. They were also first cousins with Russia's Tsarina, Alexandra. And the Tsar, Nicholas, was first cousins with George. Family blood ran from Britain to Germany, to Russia, Denmark, Greece, and beyond. And that counted for something. Right?